Now, could the Red Bull Empire be about to come crashing down? Unless you've been living under a rock these last few days, you'll have seen Christian Horner is being investigated by Red Bull over some alleged inappropriate conduct, and it's a process that could well cost him his job. What's happened? As if 2024 in the F1 world cannot get any crazier, it was revealed on February the 5th that Red Bull team principal and CEO Christian Horner was under investigation by his own team. Dutch journalist Eric Van Haren was the first to break the story and was told by the company that owns Red Bull Racing that they were taking the matter very seriously. Horner himself has denied it, and understandably, Red Bull have been unwilling to give out too many details given it's an internal matter. What do we know? Despite Red Bull's hesitancy, there are some details we know. Firstly, the investigation was started by Red Bull GmbH, the Austrian company that produces the energy drink and owns the Formula 1 team. Crucially, Horner is not CEO of this company, instead a man named Oliver Mintzlaft is. Mintzlaff was appointed to oversee the sporting ventures of the team following the death of Dietrich Mateschitz in 2022, and it said Mintzlaff is the one pushing to find out what really went on. This is nothing surprising, of course, and if a complaint was made about any senior figure, a similar process would most likely start, but you cannot accuse Red Bull of going about it half-heartedly. Their first step was to appoint an independent lawyer, who set about gathering facts on the case, and after days of work, a date was set for Horner's first meeting with this person. Horner's London Meeting Friday, February the 9th was established as the day Horner would sit down with the lawyer and give his side of the story, but as soon as that date was revealed, the media interest went through the roof. The original venue of Red Bull's factory in Milton Keynes was changed, and instead the two met at an undisclosed London location, and it was not a brief chat either. A man who has been in the loop more than most is Sky Sports' Craig Slater, who revealed just what took place in that extraordinary meeting. Slater said on Friday, Christian Horner has been in this interview situation since about 10 o'clock this morning. I expect it to come to an end about 6 p.m. This is the first interview he's had since we learned about this case. A female employee and colleague at Red Bull Racing has accused Horner of controlling and coercive behavior. I don't expect an outcome or resolution by the end of today. I've been led to understand that this could be a long process. While it's understandable that everyone is dying to know what was said, but also more importantly, when a result may be given. When will we know the result? As for when a result could be given, that's also up in the air. But again, Slater had more of an idea than most. He said, I've been guided away from expecting an outcome to this investigation today. I think you're right not to call it a hearing when it's what it's been mostly described as. I think this is more of a meeting and an interview by the investigators with Christian Horner, which will be, as I understand it, in a central London location today rather than at the team's headquarters in Milton Keynes, so I'm not expecting an outcome today. Clearly, it's a very significant day. We know that Red Bull are taking this investigation very seriously. There's an allegation of inappropriate behaviour by Christian Horner by a female member of staff and I understand that relates to controlling and potentially coercive behaviour. That's what we're looking here in terms of what Christian Horner is being accused of. He has emphatically denied the allegations and is going to work to clear his name, but this could be the first step, I've been led to understand, in a process which could go on for a while. It was later reported that a resolution may not even come out until close to the Bahrain Grand Prix at the start of March. What will happen if Horner is found guilty? The next question on everyone's mind is, what will happen to Horner should he be found guilty? The investigation is a major threat to Horner's role at the team, which he has held since 2005 and become the face of the championship winning outfit. Horner's role also extends past just being a team principal, with the 50 year old also the CEO of the racing outfit. Reports in Germany and Austria have suggested there is pressure from above for Horner to voluntarily step down, although ESPN have suggested Horner has no intention of doing so. Crucially, Horner was not suspended by the company and has worked at the team's Milton Keynes office since news of the investigation broke on Monday. But without question, a negative outcome would almost certainly make Horner's place untenable, and his 19-year spell at Red Bull would be over. Who would replace Christian Horner? If Horner is asked to leave, Red Bull then have the daunting prospect of replacing one of the most successful team principals in F1 history. So, who on earth do they get to do that? 
A novice contender is Jonathan Wheatley, who has served as sporting director for the team since joining from Renault in 2006. The nature of his current job lends itself mostly easily to the position of team principal, and if Red Bull were looking for some of Wheatley's best qualities, they don't have to look very far. Among the great many jobs that fall under the aegis of the sporting director, pit stop performance is that which has the most resonance for racing fans. Under Wheatley's guidance, the Red Bull Racing pit crew have become the benchmark for F1. They were the first crew to break the two-second barrier for completing a pit stop and beyond the headline times have raised the bar for season-long consistency. But there are also reports that Red Bull may go a different way entirely. Another leading candidate appears to be former Red Bull junior Oliver Oakes. The leader at junior Formula competitors High Tech GP, Oakes was a part of the Red Bull junior setup during his own career and has kept the relationship going with a number of recent development drivers taking to the track behind the wheel of one of his cars. The 36-year-old is familiar with Helmut Marko and vice versa, which reportedly sees Oakes as an ideal candidate to succeed Horner. It's also said that Red Bull will want to install a CEO alongside the new team principal, making Oakes an even more likely candidate. What if Horner is found innocent? If Horner is found innocent of all charges, there is no question he'll stay on in the role, but there may have already been irrecoverable damage done to the team's dynamics. Red Bull are a unique case in Formula 1 when it comes to their management structure. A look at the company, Red Bull Racing, on any official website, and CEO Christian Horner is clearly identified as the head honcho. And yet, dig a little deeper and there is a long-standing power game taking place. Horner's role may be the top of the Red Bull Racing tree, but in terms of the wider Red Bull group, it's now CEO Oliver Mintzlaff, who heads up the energy drink sporting division, and then there is Helmut Marko. The 80-year-old was a key factor in the team's formation almost two decades ago and was rewarded with a vaguely titled motorsport advisor role. Marco was even one of those who selected Horner to run the operation, and that relationship seemed secure for a long time. Rumours of a Marco-Horner power struggle first emerged midway through the 2023 season, with the former's xenophobic comments in relation to Sergio Perez putting him in the spotlight. Horner insisted Marco was not an employee at Red Bull Racing and was therefore not under the team principal's jurisdiction. And when it came to Red Bull GmbH, it appeared Marco had the same sway with Mintzlaff and Mark Mataschitz as he did with the latter's late father. Marco survived the incident, but whether Horner now comes through his own Red Bull investigation into alleged inappropriate behavior remains to be seen. Horner strongly denies those claims. The surfacing of the investigation was also telling. It originated from Dutch media with a source close to the Verstappen camp, which began speculation that Jos Verstappen and Marco were behind it. This, of course, had not been proven, but it's telling that when the battle lines were drawn, even longtime allies were hesitant to come out in support. Compare this to when Marco was under pressure and there were reports Max Verstappen would walk away should Marco be given the boot. But even if the allegations proved to be baseless and Horner's name is cleared, that relationship between the two men does seem to be strained beyond repair. Compare it to the other nine constructors on the grid, at each of them you can point to the leader. Andrea Stella may be McLaren's team principal, but Zach Brown is the CEO above him. Alessandro Aluni Bravi is the team representative of State. Andreas Seidel is the CEO above him. James Wells is Williams' team principal. Matthew Savage is the chairman of owners Doralton Capital above him. Horner will want to determine just who is behind this plot to oust him, and that could have repercussions far beyond his own position. Heading into the new season, you'd have been hard-pressed to find anyone who did not believe Red Bull were about to walk to another title. But now there are doubts. Horner's role is less technical, so you will not have a say on the car build, but anything like this is enough to potentially disrupt a team, with their rivals just waiting for any chance to move ahead. The next few weeks will be crucial for Red Bull. A quiet resolution, and this will disappear from memory, but a noisy exit and Red Bull's credentials as title favourites may be under threat. As always, thanks for watching this video and let us know in the comments how you think this will pan out. In the meantime, like the video and hit subscribe so you never miss a release here on the DRS Straight.